All right, thank you for joining us tonight. We're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about going from 5D back to 3D and then getting back to 5D and what life is like. Um, before we start, I'd like to just do a few slow deep breaths and get a little centered. So just inhale through your nose. Just allow yourself to let go of the day. Exhale through your mouth. And just allow yourself to inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Just drop the day. Just drop your arms. Drop the tentacles. Drop it down. Just be present with us now. Inhale. And then exhale. And just drop your shoulders. Move your head a little and allow yourself to be present to the story that we're about to share about our experience over the last six weeks and how that went. <sighs> so for all of you and all of us as we begin this journey up to 5D, there will come a time that there is something in your life that you and only you can do. It is up to you. It is on you. You cannot parcel it off, pass it off to someone else. You cannot avoid it spiritually. It is going to be your duty to do. Your obligation, your privilege, pick a word, they're all accurate. This was for me, one of those. We live in very rarefied air here. Tricia and I have flown at 5D for decades now on this plane. Uh, we were first told that we were there probably in 1998. Right? Whether we were or not, we don't know, but it doesn't really matter. But we have flown in times where manifestation is like this, to where we think it, it becomes. Where if we want something healed, or we want something fixed, it happens. It may not be instantaneously, but it is within a very short period of time. This was, and still is, my journey with the woman who gave birth to this body that I wear. Now notice I did not say she gave birth to me for that is not a true statement. I was not even this, I was not even present in the body as it was being designed in the womb. I will tell you point blank, this body was designed molecule by molecule for this lifetime. Um, it's wonderful. So was Trisha's. My mother, is a delightful being who has totally forgotten who she is. She remembers who I am. She has known that since birth, but she forgets. This was my time. This was the finishing of a contract with her in which I had to go down because she now has Alzheimer's. She is at the same time forgetting who she's been and remembering who she's always been, which is an intriguing journey. South Texas, Corpus Christi, and yes, I was literally born in Spawn Hospital overlooking Corpus Christi Bay. All right, um, so this is where I grew up. But that energy for Tricia and I is so, so, so dense and heavy. It is like moving into the LaBray tar pits. Right? And I do not mean trying to walk through them, I mean submerged in them, having to force your way through, breathing the tar, having to shift to breathe and function in that environment. That is 3D to us at this point. They are solidly there in 3D. It took us a week of being there, of fighting this battle, for the light workers in the area to even start to notice we were there. 
When they did, they came. Can I share? Sure. So if you think back in your own life about your travels and different places you've been, what you'll find is that some places you walk into, and I don't just mean a house, I mean literally a town, and you'll go there or a city, and you'll go, wow, this just feels right to me. And other places you go to and you're like, eh, I don't think I'm ever gonna go back there. Some people, an example, New York City. New York City is exciting for some people and they just get jazzed and they're like, oh, this is my city. Other people look at New York City and go, never. That is not where I need to be, right? Some people like, really feel connected to urban areas and other people feel connected to rural areas. Every place has an energy. And there's a whole, I know many of you know your astrology and your numerology, there's a whole thing about the grids and where you should live. And Astral cartography. Astral cartography and of course, it, Anyway, there's a whole thing about astral cartography. He's supposed to live in the ocean. I'm literally the, <laughs> the only place only on this planet that, that is for appropriate him. for me to live and right. we're in astral cartography is <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific Ocean, not even an island. Right. No, no land, just the ocean. So we can't quite move there yet. But anyway, um, but uh, and Dallas for us, which is why we came back here, resonates with us. It does. Maybe not downtown anymore as we've gotten older, maybe a little more like Richardson and suburbs, but it resonates more with our energy and who we are. And as most of you know, we've traveled extensively around the globe and definitely around the US for sure. And it just is a, you find where you fit. And if you don't fit, you move, you know? We all loved Sharon. She didn't feel like she fit in Dallas. She's loving Sedona. She fits there, that's her energy. So you need to find what works for you. So um, South Texas, and this is a small town called Portland, um, outside of Corpus Christi. We were not actually in Corpus Christi. And that area By the way, also, saying Portland and Corpus Christi is like saying, you know, Dallas and Addison. Yeah, <laughs> it's a suburb. And then um, uh, Sinton, which is a farm area and rural area outside of Texas, are all beautiful, don't get me wrong, and people love it there. People move there, and that, that resonates with their energy. For us, you might as well kill me. It's like a death sentence. It's hard. It and it does actually not. try to kill her. Literally. It is not my energy, and we've lived in seven. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so yeah, so I just want you to think about that. So it's not like Corpus is a bad place. I'm not saying that at all. Portland's a bad, and we're not saying that at all. We're saying it just does not resonate with who we are. Other people, it may be like heaven to them, and they may move there, and many people are, and it works for them. Mm -hmm. For us, it doesn't work. So, we went down the 1st of June to um, just see his mom because we hadn't seen her in a while and kind of assess the situation and where her mind was and all of that. By the way, she got diagnosed in December. We hadn't seen her. She yet. hadn't told us until June. Until so just before we left. And Neither we went down husband. for a long weekend and realized that it's more severe than what uh, we had been led to believe. Um, when someone has memory issues, when you talk to them on the phone, they can be very lucid for short periods of time and you don't realize where they are. And it's not until you're with them for 24 hours, 48 hours regularly, and you start to see the patterns and what's not working. So we've been talking to them about going into a retirement center since we moved back, which six is about years six ago. years. And they weren't ready. Um, unfortunately, I wish they had, because they could have enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, but they, when we talked to them then, we were very straightforward that you really have to go. You really don't have much of a choice at this, this point. This was a point, as I said, this was a final contract with Mother. She no longer had a choice, and it fell to me to make her understand she no longer had a choice. And that's very hard, especially very for hard. your parents, right? Um, Ultimately, it was done in love, but it could not always be done with love. And the reason I'm sharing all of this is the guides, the powers that be that I am, have said, share your process. Be transparent. Because, <clears throat> because all of you 
will go through similar things. I want you to know you have the strength, you have the courage to make it through. Not only do you have that, you actually know what you need to do. You know it within yourself. You will find it within yourself no matter the challenge that's being put in front of you. All right? So that's why I'm doing this. Trust me, I would rather not talk about all this. And when you're spiritual, it doesn't matter. It doesn't you, matter. You can be spiritual, very connected to source, know that you're loved, have no doubt whatsoever, and you still have emotions, right? You're still in a body, so you still be happy, you're sad, right. you're angry, you're frustrated. All of that still is there, and you can't deny it and go, Oh, life's perfect. I'm so happy all the time. You can't Nobody go, is. Om, go away. Om, go away. That's not work. That's right. a good one. That, 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 you should work. try that one. <laughs> or can you go on a creek away? Still doesn't work. It didn't happen. It is, this is, there are those things that you must do. Um, you just have to. That's all. With this, we went in knowing what we were facing. We went in holding all the energy and all the power that we are. And we walked in there with this energy riding behind us and then had to step down the first day or two we were there so it didn't simply overwhelm my mother and Tommy, yeah. Oof, her that husband. Was hard. That was hard to do because we knew what the next steps were going to be they did too, but they didn't. Yeah. All right. So they had agreed. They had agreed to go. When we were there the first time, they right. agreed to go, which we were surprised. But they did say yes. And so we spent most of June really kind of getting ready for that. So we weren't here working in June. Right. We were over um, attempting to, you know, get things ready and get things organized and, and as much as we could do before we got down there. We, we also knew that we were already physically tired from two years of being here and we needed that time we, we really needed a vacation about now anyway but we needed that two weeks that we took in the middle of June before we went down just to gather energy I am not joking when I say to you that for Tricia and I we have created entire metaverses with one one thousandth of the energy we had to expend and hold and channel for three weeks in Corpus so when we came back the first week, we literally could not lift our head off the pillow. We would get up, we'd go sit down, we'd be out again for an entire week. That's how exhausted our bodies were. Right? So that's why you didn't see us until yesterday here. All right. Yeah, so his mom, um, in the few weeks that they decided, and then there was a couple of weeks before we got down there, we were gonna go on Friday and his mom kept getting more and more nervous. And so we ended up going in on Tuesday. So we ended up going a whole week early in essence, uh, four or five days early than what we had originally planned. But it worked out perfectly because we needed to get them ready to actually move from a house that she'd lived in for 50 years. And, and hoarded she it was a for hoarder. 50 years. And so she'd been uh, hoarding and uh, you know, garages you can't walk into is maybe a little path because everything's literally floor to ceiling old stuff that nobody even knows what's in there except for the rats and uh, the house was the same so we get down there we get down there we walk in we attempt to be peaceful we are attempting to be peaceful and calm our own energy down <laughs> right because we know we have three weeks to do the impossible right so please understand this is what we knew we had to one get her packed up just her personal get her and Tommy out of the house that has to happen within the first week because July 1st they literally moved into their retirement center no ifs no ands no buts we've got the moving truck coming All right so we walk in we're trying to be peaceful and we're hitting their resistance hitting their resistance hitting matter their fact, resistance she called yes. the day before we drove out literally the day we, we are packed we've got 
Gina took care of our animals, uh, our cats. We were packed, we were ready to go. We were gonna get up in the morning and drive the eight hours to Corpus Christi and then start this whole process. She calls us and says, I need more time. I'm not going. You have to give me another year. I'm not going. Ooh, wow. I'm not going. Yeah. We're not yes. living. And we said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> and so we knew we had to get down there in order mm -hmm. to calm things down and to get them ready. What we didn't anticipate was, again, thanks to, again, not, not only who we are, but who you are, being here in Intellikia, we can all continue to raise our vibration and just float and be in such a different place. And we actually didn't expect quite the <laughs> slam when we got there. Energetically, we felt it as we were moving towards that. But when we walked in their house, it just almost threw us both back physically. Right. Well, that little wall of mosquitoes you hit when well, you walked in the front, to the walk to the front door. <laughs> uh, no, but this is also important that each of you hear. All of us talk, all of the metaphysics talks about raise your vibe, raise your vibe. When we get to 5D, it's all wonderful. There are still going to be times, people, that you have to deal with 3D, and you cannot use 5D tools in 3D. All right. You would not go to a warlord and say, let's have a sit down over a cup of coffee and have a talk. You'd be dead. All right. That's the same thing between dimensions. Once you have made it, when you go back down, you have to take your energy with you all the way down. You cannot, and I'm going to use the term fight, you cannot fight 3D and with 5D energy. It must be done with 3D energy and 3D tools. And you have to learn, this is why tonight's talk is 5D to 3D and back. Because you have to learn if you are truly going to be what I call a spiral wizard, meaning that you move through all the levels at any will at any time you want, you have to be able to downstep your energy to match the energy of where you are trying to manifest and work, pure and simple. If that's at your job, then that's what you have to do while you're at your job and you come home and you raise back up. All right, but if you are going to work like we did in 3D, we had to go to 3D levels. Now that means that all that wonderful peace and love and joy that you feel emanating us from us all the time had to be kept contained and had to show back up periodically as absolute anger and absolute power. Okay, so there were moments, and I will not lie about this, that I was in my mother's face screaming at her, you cannot stay here. You cannot take that. You cannot do that. All right. And that hurts. You, when it is your turn to fight those battles, will hurt. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to wish there was a better way. Heck, even Jesus said, if this cup can pass for me, may it. Right? It didn't. He knew that. But you have to play the game at the level the game is played at. Okay? It just doesn't work otherwise. So we went in for three weeks to be in 3D again. That means that I had to deal with the people who are delivering the dumpsters to us. By the way, just so you understand, it took two 20-yard construction dumpsters filled to overflowing to empty my mother's garage. Not the house. The garage. The house was a whole nother story. And mind you, it was only 1,100 square feet. This is not a big house. But she had 5,000 square feet of crap in it. Uh, so as you're doing these things, as you're working on your own shifts, your own involvement, your own growth, just remember, you're still going to have those times where you have to play by the rules of something that's not where you want to be. It's just as it is. Do it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't judge yourself for it. You just have to do it. 
And uh, an example for me that is when my mother was um, alive, uh, she actually was extremely Christian and she said she heard the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We call them spirit guides, right? And so for us, we might say it's my spirit guide told me blah, blah. She would say the Holy Spirit told her blah, blah. So whenever I would talk to her, I would have to use words that made sense to her. Mm -hmm. I couldn't use my words. I had to actually change enough that she could hear me, both energetically as well as verbiage. So if I got insights or guidance, I would have to say the Holy Spirit told me, even if I personally believe it's probably my guides told me. And so it's kind of that on steroids. Mm -hmm. So you do it all the time, right? You right. talk to people every day at your job right. and your life and your family. And you have to word things a little bit differently. You have to look at things a little bit differently in order for them to even hold a conversation with you as you continue to grow both personally and spiritually. And it's kind of like that, except more so. So we got there, and the very first week was getting them ready. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, part of what happens with Alzheimer's is, again, things don't always, or dementia, it's kind of a, it's a uh, continuum at this point. But um, with any kind of dementia, one of the things that happens is the mood swings. And so um, one minute we were saints and angels sent from heaven, and one minute we were the devil and demons and doing things and making them do stuff they didn't want to. And it would literally change moment by moment that depending passed. on who she was talking to, right. including us. <laughs> yes. At one moment she was screaming at us and telling us that she's not going and this isn't okay. And another minute she was like, I know this is the best thing for me. Thank you so much for doing this. Yes. So I mean that's like day by day, every day, that's the roller coaster that was going on. Yes, the, the, why am I having to go to this little teeny tiny room? I don't like this room. I don't. And I had to remind her mother, it's not a teeny tiny you're room. here. Number one, it's only 300 square feet smaller than your house. It's a two bedroom, two bath, two walk-in closets <laughs> apartment. <laughs> but you're here because you told me for years you would go to no other facility but this one. <clears throat> I did not want you to go here. I had yeah. someplace better in mind right. for you. Which, by the way, for all of us, is a good reminder. When we're telling the universe, I want this right here, right, this, 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 the universe is probably going, well, I'll give you that, but I really have a better plan <laughs> if you'll just <laughs> surrender and listen. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of layers to what we've gone right. through here, and there's no way to unpack it all in one night tonight. Uh, but yes, the first week was getting them out of the house. Now we had this delusion that once we got them out of the house, we could clean the house and get out of the hotel and stay there. We took an air mattress, we took food, we took everything we needed to do this. No, that was not going to happen. <laughs> it was too filthy. It was too filthy. We would have both been just sick from inhaling the, 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 dust the dust in this house. When you're a hoarder, you can't clean, right? So. You're not cleaning up around all the dust. So, so the stuff. only thing that was semi-clean were the trails that they moved right. through the house on. And there, that's all it was, was trails about that wide all through the house. Uh, we were laughing. At one point, we'd got most of it cleaned out. And Trisha looks over and goes, I didn't know there was a couch over there. We hadn't seen it in 20 years. Because <laughs> she always had it covered with something and no way to get to it. Right? So... That's week one. We're getting them out. Um, but just a, just another yeah. Yeah, example of that is we mentioned that they had five days before the movers would come and they just needed five days of clothes and underwear and everything like that to put in a little suitcase because we'd be packing up everything else while they were still there the first week. And they couldn't understand why they needed five days of anything, either one of them. Or what five days of clothes meant. And then at one point, they both got very upset and worried that that meant that that was all they were going to be able to have in the rest of their life. And so they opened suitcases and started emptying stuff into suitcases. Randomly. Randomly. You know, underwear here, a toothbrush book. here, yeah. a book. I know, uh, it's just very One odd. shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, anger and yelling right. and lots of that over the, over the first week right. especially. But we did make it through the first week. We made it through and, the first week. Um, and in the, the, now, again, we're still working very, very hard every, every day. single day, packing boxes, right. throwing stuff away. All right. My mother, I found tax returns from 1983. You don't uh, need to keep your tax returns out. All right. I found catalogs from 1974. She had them marked because she wanted to buy stuff out of them. And 
No. No. She had a mark because she wanted to buy stuff out of them, but those companies weren't even around anymore. <laughs> Right. Much less that product at that price. Yeah. You know, sure. No longer two dollars. I'm sorry. It's probably twenty now. <laughs> or two hundred, depending uh, on what. Not the is. case. Yeah. But the problem was she didn't want any of it thrown away, no. so we had to do it on the sly. So we're slyly throwing stuff into dark trash bags and sneaking it sneaking out of the house out. as fast as we can. So again, we're not those kind of people. You know, we'd like to be upfront with you. We, you, you, those of you that know us know that we would rather tell you the truth than have to to hide and sneak around behind you because. It really isn't who we are, but you, when you deal with somebody like that, there's just things you have to do and right. things you have to take care of. Right. Once we got them out of the house and we could truly start cleaning, and welcome, come on in. This is a little you're, you're different not, because we're talking about the time we were out of town. It's not as what and, we and normally the do. The process of moving my mother into a retirement center now that she has Alzheimer's. Not so, normally what we're doing on Wednesdays. No. Come back again next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so we got them out of the house. End of the week, we started cleaning. We finally once the once the movers came and got the furniture out of their bedroom, we could actually begin to clean the floor in the bedroom. All right. There was a pile of dirt and wrappers and crap in the center of the floor this high. By the time I finished sweeping it up, Ooh. that was one room. That did not include her closet in that bedroom. No. There was just, it was, it's the only way I have to describe it. That's why we said we're staying in the hotel. Now, mind you, this wonderful hotel, because this is this is where you, you have to have a sense of humor. No. It's a Marriott brand hotel, you know, Fairfield Suites or whatever yeah, it is, place. town place. Yeah. It had no cold water in our room. In our room, it had only scalding hot water. So we come back from a hard day of labor. We're sweating. We need to take showers, and literally, there's no cold water. You have to jump in, jump out. Are you jump will in, be burned? Jump in, jump out, because you'll get burned. So I kept complaining at the front desk, and like, this is not okay. This is not okay. And finally, after about the first week, they said, well, we can have a plumber go up there and check it out. While we were gone, the plumber checked it out. They called us and went, oh, you're right. You don't have any cold have water. Cold water. <laughs> now, the cool part is. This is life in 3D. The cool part is. Yeah, it took a week. That was the downside. But the cool part is that then they upgraded us to a suite, which had cold water, too, and had a full kitchen. So that was really nice. So right. we could cook and all so that kind of stuff. So we could now, because Trisha brought a lot of food. So now we weren't at my mom's so we house, but we were able to eat healthy food. Because <laughs> this is the other part of what happens. There is nothing healthy there. There's nothing healthy to eat there. Nothing. All right. They had a Wendy's and it closed because nobody wanted <laughs> yeah, to eat Yeah, when the little healthy. town can't support a Wendy's, but they can support Whataburger, McDonald's, and, you know, Taco Bell, uh, yeah, <laughs> you kind of know the food. level at which they eat. Um, anyway. So we now made it to the next room. Life is getting better, but it's now the week two, which is truly, we can now see, okay, oh crap, it's week two. We've only got two weeks left and we've got all of this to do. And by the way, uh, right before they moved on a Monday, first on the first on a Monday, she went to church on Sunday to get lots of sympathy from everybody about how awful her daughter-in-law and son were, and that they were making her move and how awful that was. And um, they all got lots of hugs and cried and all that kind of great stuff. And COVID. And shared COVID with each other. Oh. Oh. So she came back to the house and shared it with everybody else. <laughs> we did uh we were we are blessed to have some money and we did hire people to help us because we could never have gotten done without that but they also got sick well what we didn't know is her 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 whole church had been passing covid around for a while all right so the young men that we hired that showed up to actually help were from her church and i'm quite grateful for that and they were the ones who one of them said oh yeah i've had covid we've all had covid in the church i'm still getting over it on antibiotics i'm going great all right so now but it's week two we've been exposed all right so we're already hacking because of all the dirt in the yeah, house i mean you literally yeah, touch stuff and it's just like the dirt. So unfortunately, uh, she moved into her brand new apartment, um, again, still in boxes, we haven't gotten her out of boxes, but one day, uh, but the second day she's there, she starts getting sick, she's right. throwing up and vomiting, I mean, she's just literally got the worst part of COVID, and of course, she now thinks that's because we made her move. 
That wasn't because she got sick from church, although we now know that it was different. But anyway, she and her husband both got really, really sick that first week, but that was good for us. Yes, they kept We weren't sick way. yet, but we were starting to feel kind of bad, but again, mostly dust, but we weren't really sick yet. It hadn't hit us yet. And the good news is it kept them out of our way because, again, we had to really move quickly. The bad news is that in the middle of them being out of the way and us starting to get sick, Trisha got bit by a brown recluse. <gasps> Yeah. So at some point I didn't see the spider, but I'd been I had bruises all over my arms from all the boxes and everything that we had. To we do. literally looked like we had been beat. And so her birthday was in the midst of all this and we had a party at her new place. But I wore long sleeves and I even said to the lady, I'm I wear long sleeves. Good thing I brought something with long sleeves because I'd look like my husband beat me up. Because <laughs> I've got like bruises everywhere. And that's not the case. We've been moving and moving boxes. And I just thought it was a bruise. And then the next day it gets bigger and bigger and literally ended up about that big black with a white pussy pot in the middle something real graphic and i ended up having to have someone check it out and they're like it probably was a brown recluse by the way at this point we've already decided without checking it out it's a brown recluse we can see so of course i'm freaking marks. out <laughs> so, what do i do i call allison and gina and this center and said, help, thank you for showing up. Because from that moment forward, it began to heal. We, with Anna Creek, we pulled the venom out. With near infrared, we healed it. There is no scar, it never abscessed, it never went necrotic, and every time Trisha wore that pad in near infrared, we have one in the clinic, right? You could literally see it go down, go down, and get lighter and smaller. I kept thinking maybe it's still bruised. It never bruised. Yeah. It literally was a spider bite. Once right. it puffed up that big, we could see the bite yeah. marks. Now I will tell you, this is the difference between me having grown up there and South Texas wanting to kill her, literally. <laughs> I got bit the next day. Probably not a brown <coughs> I'm going to tell you it was the same damn spider. <laughs> I don't know, not the same spider, but yeah, you They're can mean. see it. Right here on my arm. They're mean. You can see both fang marks. You can see the little red circle. Mm -hmm. I looked at it, pulled the venom out, and it went away. Nothing. It never expanded at all. But the cool part was, because if you know anything about brown recluse, they usually do the pus pocket, usually it, you get necrotic tissue, and sometimes they have to do surgery, and just, oh, it yeah. gets awful. Yeah, grafts yeah. 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 and just all I kinds of crap. So, nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing. Anu Cree. I did do, we did Anu Cree. Those of you who know about it helped with the energy. I did the uh, red and near infrared light therapy twice a day on it, morning and night, when we were at the house. Please understand, we're still working. We're still I mean, working. I literally wrapped it in bandages. 12 hours a day. We're still working. In, 12 hours a in day. In 90 degree hard, weather. Hard labor. 90 degree humidity, so it's 100 and something degrees of uh, what it feels like. So when I realized it was a brown recluse bite, I really was like freaking out. Like, oh my God, I'm going to go to the hospital. No, <laughs> emergency clinic. I don't know what to do. And then he called and that helped calm, calm me down as yep. well. I also did uh, homeopathy. I did uh, Apis, Apis Malefica and there was another one, I'm just not remembering yeah. it right now, which is for bites. And so all the things that we were doing, mm -hmm. I think made a huge difference and there's not even a scar. So but it was literally, I have pictures. It was literally, this whole area was black, just black. It kept expanding. Okay, her picture she took was before it really went right, black. Right, before it really got worse, right? It got worse after that. So yeah, so of course my body is dealing with that venom. My body is dealing with the poison that's in my arm, with the toxins, arm, we're, with breathing the toxins in. we're breathing in. Attack. And then, yeah. yeah, and then I was just attacked. Plus we're dealing with this energy of like tar that we're trying to walk through, the 3D energy and his mother and all of that. And then uh, we start feeling sick with COVID. <laughs> and we realize that we're not just the, uh, uh, not just, not the, just the hoarding dust because of the hoarding of that they're doing, but the, the fact that we're actually ill. But okay. we still can't stop because we, stop. we don't want to be, we can't take a week off. We're in a hotel. Who wants to be sick in a hotel, right? <laughs> I want to get through this, be done, and get home to my own bed. <laughs> so yeah. 
So we had to keep going. Had to keep going. There was, and remember what I said in the beginning, there will come a time that it is on you to do what you must do. You will have to do it from start to finish. There is no stop. There is no break. There is no God help me. There is only I will do this. And it must come from your core of connection to source to blow through it. And that is what we did. We used every single tool we have gained in my case, 65 years of life. All right, we've used everything we teach you. We move through it every night back at the hotel. We're going back to meditation. We're going back to doing the Anukri breath. I'm laying in bed at night going, Anukri, Anukri, just trying to recenter and ground and find enough life force to make it through this process. Now, obviously, there's emotions, they're still there. But the emotions, you when you are in this, you do not deny them. You do not fight them. You let them flow. If you're angry, be angry. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to throw a screaming, stomping fit, throw one. You have to let the emotions, energy in motion, move through or it will stop you still. Move, feel it move through it, release it, feel it, move it, move through it, release it. That's all you can do. So now, as you've heard, we're in the midst of all this. Now it comes time, this week too, we're still in the house. We have not approached the garage yet, all right? Now it becomes time to deal with the garage. Can I say one thing real quick? Sure. Mm -hmm. So the cool part is that now as we look back, and even during the experience, we could see mm -hmm. spirit with us. The right people showed up. Mm -hmm. I heard guidance of how to find the right people to show up. We literally got, call these guys, they know people who'll, bring, who'll come and help. Right. Obviously, like I said, we paid them, but it was it's summer and a lot of people were still not home back from trips and stuff. But we just heard the right people. Right. I, w I was I told was told to contact her my mother-in-law's church and ask them if they knew anybody who could help. And I her, told her, her response her, was, "Don't, don't bother. bother. They They're won't. useless. They're useless. Nobody will help you." But I heard <laughs> guidance, and I didn't listen to what she told me. And I contacted them. They sent out a notice, and that's how we got the first two young men. So, uh, and then the couple, couple helped us as well, and it just all. When we look back now, and even at the moment, we could see the hand of spirit working and guiding us and moving everything the way it needed to go, even though it was extremely hard. We were always aware we were not alone, that we were not doing this by ourselves. They couldn't do it for us. Right. Because it's 3D, we still had to do the labor and the work and show up. They couldn't do it for us, but they could support us energetically and make the path yes. smoother. Yes. Um. Now, mind you, she did listen. She did write to the church. They did send us two young men who came by to help. One of them was actually helpful. The other one had a torn ACL, so he couldn't carry anything. <laughs> this you is 3D. <laughs> All right. So this is the games that happened yeah. there. Uh, so Moving they to begin the journey to the garage. Well, they started in, uh, they're looking at it, and I'm going, okay, this is way more than trash bags. Uh, you know, we have in time. Oh, there was a Nordic track from the 1970s in that garage. There were five there wheelchairs were that had to be five wheelchairs. Out. None oh, of them goodness. worked. None of them were all there. Walkers never even out of the box. I'm right. sure we bought for them that they uh, the wheels were rotted on. Right. We got one box. We opened a walker because they said we need a new walker. We bought you one, you know, five years ago. But I put it together, pulled the tape off, and literally the plastic on the wheels rotted off and fell off the minute they started. It was in the garage the in South Texas. Right. So all that to say that um, we knew that it, we needed a bigger thing and we needed to so, get the dumpsters. So, so now I'm calling the the one dumpster place in Portland that we can have deliver a dumpster, and they're going, Oh yeah, no problem. We'll get it. This is Wednesday. Okay, we'll get it there to you. We'll get it there today. By the way, what's your credit card? Here's my credit card. Get me my dumpster. No dumpster. Where's my dumpster? Oh, we couldn't get your card to go through. All right, I have a $75,000 limit on this card. 
All right, there was no, this card won't go through. They it's, couldn't get it to run. There's no, nothing on nothing it. Nothing on it, zero balance. Uh, so they will try again. Well, we it won't go through. Here's a different card. But that's oh, it part went of through. That's part of 3D. That's is part of that 3D. nothing works, you know, nothing. and you have to kind of again gauge your energy to make sure that it does work. Otherwise, you just hit walls. Is Game this three. the bad? And, and breathe, breathe, or you hit walls right. constantly. Right? And, it's, and it's also knowing, okay, I know that you think there's a wall here. I'm telling you there is no wall, and we are going to go through that son of a gun. <laughs> And um, so they, they, the they got the dumpster to me that, not that day, they got the dumpster to me, they missed Wednesday, they missed Thursday, they got the dumpster to me Friday morning. All right. Well, that's great. The boys were there, new boys, one of the same. Literally, in four hours, filled that dumpster to over full. We're talking construction dumpster again. Right. This is not just the dumpster. We're, we're talking behind a dumpster that's about room. as long as this room and four yeah. feet high and four mm -hmm. feet no, we're wide. Construction dumpsters. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things uh, again that you just know that the that we're taking care of mm -hmm. is that the couple that was so so was two young boys and a couple that were helping us. And the couple that were helping us, the husband went out to the garage to look at some stuff and he picked something up. And all of a sudden, he, he picked it up and it exploded in his face. It was oh kerosene. Oh and it exploded all over him and all over his face. Kerosene. He ran in the house. He put his head in a bucket that was there that had rainwater in it. And he ran in the house. And they, the mosquito larva. And they fixed him up. And, they, they, and he was fine. Nothing wrong with his eyes. No nothing. skin burns. Nothing. No nothing. Wow. But nothing yeah. in his lungs. Nothing. He was fine. But again, you're like, wow. So right. see all those little pieces that you know could have just been any one of these things could, could have, have exploded to the been whole huge. But when you're able to hold the energy and be there and still connect yourself, even if you have to down, down shift, right. connect yourself to source, the right things happen. So luckily he was able to come back and help, but he didn't get, I was freaking out like, did he go to the hospital? What's up? But you know, I wasn't, by the way. Kerosene could have been serious, right? And it wasn't. So yeah. that was, again, just these little things so, happening, like right. my arm did not uh, create right. any problems, right. just continuing to happen. Right. So now we're on Thursday, the dumpster's full. Okay, come get your dumpster. I need it emptied and I need it brought by. Oh, we can't do that. There's a hurricane coming. We were in the path of the hurricane. <laughs> Of course, right? Of course we were in the path of the hurricane. Of course! It's coming right at us. So, of well, course it okay, is. Okay, the hurricane's not even supposed to be anywhere near us till Saturday. Can't you come get my... Oh, no, they all are home boarding their houses up and leaving the area. Yay! Uh, <laughs> uh, of course they are, right? So, anyway, okay, we'll deal with it. You know, the hurricane doesn't come. Well, but but we, why didn't the hurricane come? Well, the hurricane didn't come. Well, the, there's, do we need to tell the whole story? Probably. Probably. I was so angry week one. <laughs> all right, and please understand, when you have your full connection and your full power and you do something with full emotion behind it, it will manifest. Beryl had not barely even been named was still on the other side of the Yucatan and I got to that apartment that night and I laid there in bed and I said Beryl come Beryl come wipe this fucking house off the map <laughs> from that moment on you can go back and watch the news reports from that moment on it was a beeline, beeline. straight to Corpus the Corpus Christi <laughs> And that they was, live on the water. Yeah, like, they're literally the across the street from Corpus Christi Bay is where my mother's like, house Like, had is. it hit hard in Corpus, it probably would have taken the yeah, house down. It would have saved us a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Collected insurance and sold a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but by the time we got, but as, as it was getting there, we realized we can finish this. Right. We are going to meet the goal we've set in the timeline we've set. So I said, okay, Beryl, no, no, no. Calm down now. Mm -hmm. Friday night, Saturday night, 
Krisha and I are back at the hotel. We're meditating. We're he tells going, me what he did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> I don't think those were her exact words. Uh, so now we're pushing, pushing. And I'm talking to Beryl. And I know this sounds crazy to some of you, but you all know I'm nuts. This is not, we're this crazy. Is not news. So we're talking to Beryl and said, all right, here's the deal. I, I know I called. I know you answered. Because hurricanes are an elemental spirit. All right, they are an elemental. Energy. They are energy. So I simply said, well, you can't come here, please. And I said, why don't you pick up in the middle by Victoria where it's just flat open farms and you're not going to hurt anyone? Well, if you go back and you look at where the hurricane was on Saturday, yeah, we turned the news on and watched it. And it was headed for Victoria. It's headed for Victoria. That area of the state where it wasn't going day. to calm any, harm anything. And then I said, thank you. And he said, oh, no, no, no. And everyone else, if you listen to the news, Beryl was a girl. Uh-uh. Beryl wanted his pronoun to be he. <laughs> and he said, nope. I have to release. And violence is destruction is part of my release. I am going to go to Houston. I said, no, Victoria's better. And he said, no, I will go to Houston. Where did it end up? Houston. Yeah. Houston. In spite of the fact that I have family there, too, uh, who were without electricity for two days. That but, was the weirdest experience. Yeah. <coughs> but inside of all of this, and by the way, here's the, here's the bottom line. We did. We succeeded. And by the end of the third week, they were in their apartment. They were unpacked. The pictures were on the wall. The house was empty. The house was listed. I had the, the cleaning lady was scheduled to come in. We had the realtors already come in. Right. Everything. All of that in three weeks. And we had to keep my mother out of the way in order to do that. Because she would have just... And she wouldn't have done it because she didn't want to sell. She would have done it because it's who she is. And she would have talked for four hours on no subject at all while the realtor's trying to get her to sign one line, right? That's what, why we had to keep her out of the way. So we did it, we got it all done, houses were on the market, and as of this morning. Oh, well, we got, we were driving home. Oh, God. <laughs> I keep trying to forget that one. So, right. so we're actually, we're, we're like, we're both sick, my right. arm is better, but I can know that I'm still dealing with some of the after effects. The COVID's really hitting hard now, and we're just going, we've got to get home. We have to we're, go we're home. We've done we enough. We can't do anything today. else. We have to leave. We're going to leave in the morning. We packed the car up. We got I had to get a U-Haul to pack everything. Well, four by four, four by eight U-Haul. For some no big stuff deal. that we needed to hang on to, like more current tech stuff. And, and so, you know the house papers? Yeah. And so we are um, ready to go. We're getting the car. First thing in the morning, we're out of there. We're like, we gotta get out of here. And it is like tar, um, you used to call it what? The Corpus Christi suck. Because it wants to suck you back in. And it it uh, wants and, to make you stay. Stay, I've said that don't for, leave, for stay. decades to people and they all have gone, you know, you're right. Once you're there, it's hard to get away. It sucks you back in. It literally, I'm, I'm sorry, it's the humidity, it just sucks the life out of you. So we are uh, driving down a four a divided lane, highway. divided highway. All right. Not quite out of Corpus yet. Not quite out of Portland yet. We're headed down the road. We're just we're getting out of, out Portland of the energy. We're, yeah, we're, we're about to make the curve north. Just trying. We're, we're trundling, trundling along at about 65, 70 miles per hour. Did I mention divided highway? We All of up. a sudden, there is a white F Ford 250 on our, our side lane. of the highway flying at us. At us. <laughs> in our lane. On the wrong side of the freeway going the wrong side of the freeway in 10 o'clock in the morning, probably drunk, or nine o'clock in the morning, probably drunk, drunk already, but going on the wrong side of the freaking freeway at us. And I'm doing 70, he's probably doing 90. And we're thinking, And I'm just oh thinking, my okay, gosh. move, move. I get as far over as I can. I don't think he ever even saw us. He's went, I didn't realize we were there, I don't think. Right past us, you could feel the car rattle. But you know, I imagine past. we could have been in a ditch. We could have had to have car trouble. We could have had to stay longer. We could have been, I'm like, oh no, let's get out of here. <laughs> but the good news is I knew at that moment it was done. That we had broken free. Now we still drove very, very cold all the way home yeah so um, we get home that day we drove the same day eight hours and we get home and the next day we get a call from the realtor 
that it's list or two days it's listed mm -hmm. and she has two people already making offers and I had to listen to guidance because we were like how much should we list it for and I listened to guidance got the right number gave her the number and that's what we listed it for I didn't bless her heart and I do not mean in the southern sense uh, <laughs> bless her. truly bless her uh, she had those two offers one of them she said well there's two offers and she said well I'll raise mine so she the first lady raised her offer and what she did to her is the other one had already dropped off Good uh, so now they're looking at it they did all there they said okay here's the offer it was a higher lower than what we would ask but higher than what we expected uh, and it's higher than what we got but anyway she said okay great sign all this I got everything signed you know just I don't care I'll forge signatures at this point makes no difference because no, you never know there could be two or three right. you have to deal right. with right this isn't the so, final paperwork so anyway we get that done they go through their due diligence of looking at the house, what are we gonna do, blah, blah, blah. And they came back yesterday and said, here's how much we, here's, the, here's the unexpected ball. damage we found, which by the way, we was knew. about exactly what I expected yeah, them to find. we knew there'd be lots of issues. Yeah. Like they'd never maintain the house. No. So none. they came back with a really low ball offer. Low ball offer. And I went into guidance and asked what I should say, what we should offer back. And so I told him the number to offer back. And I listened. <laughs> uh, hard for men to do sometimes. Uh, but anyway, so we offered that last night. As of this morning, the offer has been accepted. The house will close next week. Yay. It will have all been done, complete, and finished. Oh, that's awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you whether the Pope ever wants to come verify it or not, we <laughs> performed a miracle yeah. to get this done in Three that weeks. area in the amount of time. Three weeks. Really, it would take most people. That time frame? Yes. It would probably take most people yeah. three months to have done what we did. It would most take yeah. three yeah. months to clean out the garage. Yeah. It was very, very hard. Right. That's very difficult. But, but there came a point, and this is also what I will tell you is part about once you have made that ascension to 5d you always know where you stand even when you're in the tar right you will remember where you stand and because we could hold that memory as each thing came up we allowed it to have to resist and allowed it to dissipate as we moved through it okay so yeah so hopefully, uh, and they were going to close towards the end of the month, and now they want to move it up to next week. Next week. So, uh, so Rusty will have, will to, fly have back. to fly back for that to make sure that his mother doesn't change her mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mom, you're not going to change your mind. Sign your name. <laughs> Here, I will uh, help you sign your name. <laughs> again, it's, it's hard. It's hard with the dementia to see a loved one who is not, who used to, could, no. could make decisions for themselves who can't anymore. It's a very difficult thing to experience as mm -hmm. your friends and family age and to watch that take place. It's very hard. There were, by the way, very many poignant moments inside of all of this. One, I never knew my mother had a baby book for me. Aww. Never knew. We had to go through every paper. Literally, we had to go through every drawer, every <laughs> file, every, file. every paper. <laughs> We did find checks and money, so that yeah. was important. But not we much. found old silverware. But anyway, you found your baby book. Found my baby which was book. actually for a couple of years. It was like five or six years she wrote in it. Oh yeah. It wasn't yeah. just so about five or so I was about six, I think. Yeah. But it was interesting. You know, I have the mythology. We all have this mythology we built of who we were as a child, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and things that we may accurately remember, may not quite so accurately remember. I now have it in writing from her <laughs> that I was the weirdest damn child she ever met. Well, I knew I saw that. <laughs> I saw uh, him, was huh? the weirdest child. <laughs> <laughs> because she would she wrote in there things like I think I was three at the time, and one of the questions was how are their what's their reasoning ability, and her statement in there was, he has the most amazing insights into things. He solves problems generally ours that we have no clue of what to do with. That's yeah, what yeah. happens when you come in as a master. Um, my mother 
in one and in spite of the or the question is are we god or satan today literally before we would go see her each day which which role are we in uh look to trisha and she says i dreamed about you all night long you are incredibly powerful as a magician you were just weaving magic all night long and I know you're powerful. I've always done that. But oh my word, she is beyond <laughs> belief. Aww. Now, mind you, this is a story coming from my fundamentalist Christian mother right. talking about watching the magic be weaved. And that no one could have done what we have done for her. Then we go back to being Satan. <laughs> um, but one of the more poignant ones and it defines the long goodbye of dementia we were this was week three we were in her apartment we were getting stuff set up putting pictures on walls, getting stuff a lot, you know, where she could find stuff and feel comfortable. Making it comfortable here. She and her husband, she was sitting at his desk playing solitaire on the computer. All right, my mother has played solitaire on computers since at least the mid nineties. She could not remember how to play solitaire. And she could not remember from one move to the next what she had to do to play the game. She was asking, her husband was sitting there with her. What do I do? What, what do, do I do, I do next? now? What do I click? All right. So, to say that that broke my heart. is an understatement. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it healed my heart because I saw her husband sitting there in patience and compassion going, Pat, you click here. Pat, you click here. She's okay. She's taken care of. Mm -hmm. This is the energy of this journey called life. This is the energy of life to death that we are all on. Do not hide from these deep emotions. Do not hide from them. If you try to hide from them, it will destroy you. You will destroy you. Walk into them. Embrace them. Accept them and let them be, and let them flow. Brother, like my nose at the moment. <laughs> so. so when we come back, as he mentioned at the beginning, because we were sick, we had to sleep a lot as yes. we did what we would have normally done had we been home and sick, right? <laughs> Herbs and teas and homeopathy and... Uh, well, Pretty much the, everything but the kitchen sink. Well, this formula <laughs> and everything we possibly could to continue feeling better. We both still are a little tired. Uh, it's only been a couple, couple weeks, but, so we're not 100% back. And here's the, here's the odd part. COVID hit her while we were down there. Right? My body held it a day until we got back. And it, literally, I thought, oh, I've, I've skipped it. Yeah, a little sick down there. I got a little sick. But it was mainly just sinuses down there. It wasn't really cough or anything real. It was just, you know, okay, I've got a headache. I don't feel well. Um, I thought I had it was home free. Woke up bam, on a Saturday morning. Not this recent one, but the previous one. Guess what? <laughs> COVID said, you're going to bed. You're going to go throw up. You're going to have chills for a day and a half. No, but then it got better. 
I still have zero energy. And even yesterday, our first day back here, I was in, for those of you who may have seen me, I was in a brain fog. Yeah. I, I could not function. And that's been really up until pretty much today that we've been in that fog. So, so go ahead. We're gonna go go ahead. ahead. So we've talked about being in 5D and how things flow and work well. We've talked about going down and moving our energy and shifting to be able to deal with the 3D things that we had to deal with. And now we're sick, but we're getting better. And we have to now bring our energy back up because we run this beautiful place, right? And because we want to live in that space where things happen quickly and fastly and all things move forward. And we're realizing that it's not. Chaos has followed us home. Because mm -hmm. Friday, all right, Saturday I was, well, that was a previous one. This Friday, actually it was most before recently. That, before that. Was it? Mm. So uh, we had a massage therapist here who, oh, yes. before, right before we left, had ready to sign her contract and take a room uh, with Deepa. Deepa is a great uh, energy healer and massage therapist too. And uh, Mary was gonna take a room with her. She, we, Cliff did a wonderful job, put the door in over there in Sharon's old space so that they could have that room together. He worked really hard, very fast to get it done for her. And we walked back and literally like day three that we are back, she texts me, I need to talk to you. So I figure she's already, I've told her how she needs to get her liability insurance and in, all the things we have to do. She talks to me and tells me that she and her husband are moving to Arkansas and she's not taking the space. So that was the first thing. That was like on Wednesday. Wednesday. I yeah. think. Last Wednesday. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I'm not taking the space. And I'm like, well, but Deepa thinks she's only taking part time. She she's only paying she's for not half paying, of it. She's not paying for the whole thing. You're leaving her in a lurch. You guys had a deal. I don't know what this. She's like, well, we just decided to move. I'm like. Okay, then on Friday, Chris, who you know, who was working here, he did a great job, please hear, he did a wonderful job. But on Friday, he was driving to work and had a, a panic a, attack, an issue, and went home and called Allison, who lives in Sherman, an hour away, <laughs> to say he wasn't coming in. And then he texted me later that day and quit through text. So again, so now the person we bring on the most, and who's done a great job while yeah. we've been gone, but this chaos is with us still. We can see. I'm looking. We're both looking around, going, "This chaos is still following us. We're still, we're still having issues. We're still, still having negative glitches. energy vortexes with us. We're having glitches go on. We have power of attorney. We thought we could sign all the paperwork and be done with the house, and come to find out, when we pulled the power of attorney out, we don't have it. His, 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 her it, husband does." So that's down in Corpus. So I mean, just all little glitches, things Good that- he's easily, easy to <laughs> manipulate. Little yeah. things that we didn't really expect even coming back. We thought, oh, we're gonna drive back into town Dallas well, and everything's gonna be great. And we're gonna get our rest and everything's gonna go back to normal. And it did not. It did not. It didn't. And so we looked at each other a couple days ago. And said, what's and said, going what on? said, what is this? Because this is the chaos of South Texas right. and your mother that is still not ours. with us. This is not my chaos. I don't live, we don't live in chaos. We live in peace. And so we, flow. we literally got together in the middle of our living room, and middle of our house. Joined hands, locked eyes, and begin and chanting Anu Creek. The Anu Creek breath work, Creek. And doing it and just Very pulsing loudly. and pulsing and pulsing. And it cleared. And after about five minutes of that, mm -hmm. and we went whoosh, and sent whatever that chaotic energy was back home or back to the light or out of our lives. And it was Probably. after that that it sped but up again. It sped back up and the house sped back up. And we've had to, since we've been back, continue all the things we know, meditation, mm -hmm. herbs, good nutrition, uh, all the pieces that we know that help us get into a better space so that we could be here tonight and we could come back to the center and we can now get back into what we have been doing and get back into this energy because you have to consciously yes. do these things. Yes. You cannot just go, well, I don't know why things aren't working. You gotta consciously go, I need to move back into my power. Right. I need to move back into my energy. I need to reconnect with source. I need to reconnect and ground whatever it is you need. I need to that, use the tools I have. That fills your soul. That's what you have to get right. back to so that you can get to that space of being back up where things flow and mm -hmm. function and move and the 
And we did that, and then it was the next day that they accepted the offer on the house. Yes. Now, on the way back up to 5D, what you remember is you're still watching what you had done and what you experienced in 3D. You've watched that play through this body tonight. The other part of that is you look at it all with forgiveness once you get back to 5D. When you're still there and you're in 3D or you're even transiting back, there's going to be those moments. There have been those moments. Did I do the right thing? Did it, did it have to be that hard? Did it have to be that? It, yes, it was what it was. And you look at it through the eyes of source. You see it with absolute forgiveness. You understand that it all played out the way it was already designed to play. It's all the stuff in the game. It's still the game. It's hard to remember it's the game when you're in 3D, though. <coughs> when you get back up to 5D, oh my Lord, that is such, it, it is like a cool drink of water after a lifetime in the desert. And you feel more compassion, compassion mm -hmm. for yourself and compassion for the people you had to deal with. And gratitude. And you see the patterns. You see that. Oh yeah, I got. I heard, and that happened, and I heard, and that happened, and these right people showed up, and this happened in the time it needed to. And we knew to, to do this, and we knew to do yeah. that. Yeah. And so you see the patterns as you move away, and as you mm -hmm. move back into your own self, and back into your energies. And so that's been a wonderful, wonderful blessing. It has. And I will not tell you that I am all the way back yet, but I'm pretty much here. I will not be fully free of South Texas until the house is closed and the check is in the bank. At that moment, it is complete. That contract between my mother and I is done. Um, I will still love her. I will still love and respect her husband. We don't have to. We're done. That there may be a, things that we still yeah. have to do while she's alive, but yeah. it will shift. Yeah, it, it already shifted. Right. I can feel the changes uh, inside. I can feel the deepening of strength, the deepening of power within me. Uh, you will notice in the near future as we become fully back, you will notice an energetic shift in both Tricia and I. You will notice it probably tonight when we open to channel here in a few moments, right? But as I told Cliff, because he and I talked, as did Allison and I while we were away, right? The amount of energy that we had to channel, the amount of energy that we had to hold, as in not release one single drop of that energy from source is now going to be available to us as these fuses and the, and the insulation of our bodies heal. So be aware, get ready. All of you will benefit from this just as we have. Because what it feels like for us and what's coming through now feels like an upgrade for us, yes. for both of us, that we're able, thanks to releasing this contract, releasing this thing that needed to be done yes. and moving back out. Sometimes you go through the darkest part of your life yes. and when you come out on the other side, it's much brighter. You go through the hardest struggles and when you come out on the other side, you see life differently. And so one of the things that we're both well aware of is we're still in that transition of it yet, but that we are actually transitioning to whatever is beyond, to we're whatever not, the next level is for us. Was it you that texted me and said, you know, uh, we'll be glad when you're back in 5D? And my answer was, what the hell makes you think I'm slowing down for 5D? <laughs> <laughs> And that's a true exactly. statement. We will no longer be functioning just at 5D. Yeah. We already are not. I can see it. I can feel it. I can know. I notice what's happening around us even today in this center. Things have begun to shift. It's 55D. 55D. There you go. 55D. Honey, I can't drive 55. Uh, are you going first or me? I'm going to go get a glass of water and you can go first. Okay. Or I can. I don't care, but I'll I'm be gonna, right back. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, Anukri breath. All right. 
Okay. And I'll be right back. Folks We're watching the it, video. I know that uh, the video is going extra long, but this is a special time for this uh, event. So what I'd like to do is the meditation. And then we will do a little bit of channeling. And obviously, as you know, when we bring in all this Anu Kree energy, um, Anu is um, it's Marian God and Kree is just energy. And as we bring that in even more and even stronger, those cards that you wrote on are being worked on now. Those cards that you wrote on are being worked on now. So allow us now to take a slow, deep breath and allow yourself to go inside and center. To go inside, having heard this story, having felt these emotions, having been on this journey with us, let us now move beyond. Move beyond where we've been before. Move beyond to the next level. Imagine in your mind's eye that you are going down into the earth, as far down into the earth as you possibly can. Deeper, deeper, way down into the earth. And from this space, I want you to inhale through your nose and bring a beautiful, beautiful golden light up. Bring it up, up through your chakras, up through your spine. Bring it up to your heart and spin it around. Beautiful golden light. And now exhale through your mouth and let it go back out to the earth, back out to the earth completely. And again, inhale this beautiful golden light up to your heart, spin it around. Anu Kri. And now allow this beautiful golden light to go back down to the earth. Anu Kri, bringing in the earth's energy into your body, bringing it up. Anu Kri, spinning it in your heart and allowing it to go back out. Anu Kri. And allow this flow to just continue as we now go up beyond the heavens. And now take yourself and your mind's eye and go farther than you've ever gone. Up, 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 up. Imagine there's an opening in the universe and you're going out beyond the stars, beyond the planets, beyond the universes. Keep going farther, farther, farther and stand on the edge of that bubble and look down and see all there is in the game, all there is in duality. And from this space of duality, now turn and look and see nothing. You see nothing. It may be bright white, it may be black, but it is source. It is the energy that runs it all. It is the energy of potentiality of anything that it can possibly be. Grab this beautiful energy as a silver light and bring it down as you inhale, down, down, down through your crown chakra, down into your heart. Spin it around. Allow this beautiful energy of potentiality to now go back. Way up, up, up. Feel that beautiful energy of source coming down, down, down. Inhale through your nose, down to your heart, spinning around and back up. And once again, bring this beautiful source energy down, down into your crown. Anu Kri, and then back up. Anu Kri. And now as these both are working, feel the energies of earth and the energies of source coming together. As you inhale through your nose and blending in your heart, Anu Kri, and now expand and send them back out and bring these energies back again into your heart, spin them around, Anu Kri, and back out. And one more time, bring them up from the ground and down from source and mix them in your heart, feeling the energy flowing through every cell of your body, healing, moving, shifting, adjusting. Anu Kri, and now let go. Continue to allow this to flow. Continue to allow this to flow. And as you continue to breathe, breathing in, breathing out, yeah. just allow all the stress and tension of your day, your week, your month, your year, your life. Feel it just begin to flow away with each breath. <coughs> breathing in, breathing out. I am peace. Breathing in, breathing out. I am whole. Breathing in, breathing out. I
We thank you for coming to hear this story, this story that is different than what normally happens on this evening. But as this being we channel through has experienced that and the one sitting next to her, we wanted you to hear from their perspective what transpired. From our perspective, it was different. Yes, we saw what took place, but we were clear with these bodies that we could not do it for them, that they must do this themselves. You must go into the darkness. You must go into the shadows. You must go to where you needed are needed most and perhaps don't wish to be. You must go there yourself. You must have that experience that we were always with them and with you to embrace them and, and support them and continue them on their path. Yet we could not step in and fix it. We were able to help by guiding them and opening doors and making things happen easier. But when you go into the darkness, it is for you and your growth. It is for you to open and to learn. It is for you to break your heart, for you to have the experience, to understand the experience on this planet. Yet we are always with you, even in the darkness, even when it does not seem like it. We are there. You may have not been hearing us, you may be ignoring us, but know that we are there with love and compassion for you. We are there to aid and assist you, just listen. Take the time to be still, to hear. Take the time to know we have not abandoned you. It may feel that way at times. It may feel that way at moments when you are the most depressed, the saddest, the biggest struggles, but know that you are not. You are never alone. There are entities in this room, there are entities on this planet that are here to support you in different ways. And as your vibration continues to move up and as you learn and move and grow in this game of life, you will find that it does at times become much easier. Things do flow. Things are opening, yet you must sometimes go down to the depths of hell. Just know you are not alone. Your guides, your, your, our, your people, your angels, and source is always with you. It is never gone. You are source. You are nothing but source. There is nothing else. These are all illusions inside the game, but yet you must understand to be that wizard, to go through the game and down and back up and down and back up. You must understand all the levels and remember each level so that you can play wherever it is the time takes you. Yet my brief message tonight is to let you know that you are always supported, just like they were supported and they can see that now. 
You are always guided. Just take the time to listen and pay attention to those hunches and thoughts. You are always taken care of. You are never alone. We are there with love in our hearts, with compassion, with support, with strength to help you through those dark times. We are there to help you through to the other side to see the light again. You are not alone. When you come out on the other side, you will be amazed at how you have grown. You will be amazed at how much stronger you are. You will be amazed at how more insightful you are to people and situations, how you can see where to go next, how you can feel the vibration in your body and the energy shifting as you go out the other side because that is the game. We move through the levels of the game, through the levels of the spiral. And as you move up and you move down and you move up, you learn how to modulate the energies. You learn how to modulate your energy as you are in different situations in your lifetime. Know that on the other side, of the darkness there is light know that on the other side of the darkness look back and see how you were protected see how you were guided see that we were there we cannot always intervene yet no we would love to because we hurt when you hurt but we wish only the best for you and if we can guide you through the mire through the dark we will, if we can guide you through to the other side, know that on that space, in that other be side of life, in that other light, you will not be the same being you were before that trial. You will not be the same energy frequency you were before that struggle. You have grown, you have shifted, you have more compassion. You have more light. You are amazing beings. And we hope you always remember that. Yet know that we are here with you, standing shoulder to shoulder, supporting you, guiding you with compassion and love. You are never alone. So there are times when you must know that part of your mission, if you would use that word, it is not necessarily the best word, but it is a word. Part of your mission that you will be asked to go into the darkness, not just for your own growth, not just for your own discovery, but for you to go and play savior to a child of light that is lost in their darkness. For when you have awakened, when you have awakened, you can see those who are lost you can see their struggles not with judgment not with pity but with compassion and you know that you can reach out a hand or a wing and you can lift them little by little so that they begin to remember in their darkness that they are whole and filled with light. This is the journey that we 
walked with these bodies on. This is the journey of going down and bringing light to someone who had forgotten in her own hell what light truly was. When we ask of you to do this, you will know that you are guided, you will know that you have the strength, and you will know that you have the tools. They are innate in who you are. It has only been the hypnosis of this world that has helped you to forget who you are. As you are now remembering, as you are entering back into the light, as you are entering into that which is your very birthright, the right of a child of light, a right of light itself, you will remember. You will look upon all around you with compassion, with hope, with love, with the desire that they remember, not the desire that you know best for them, not the desire that your way is better than their way, but with the knowing that you will help them remember who they are. And you do this simply by remembering who you are. There is nothing that can stand before you. There has never been anything that you cannot embrace and overcome. You are source. You are the children of light. You are source itself. Rise now, each of you, rise. Rise in your light, rise in your power. Have no fear, for there is nothing to fear, even in the pitch blackness of nothing but void. You are source. Remember this. This is the lesson that we kept reminding the two before you. You are source. When they wanted to surrender, when their bodies were beaten and broken, they remembered source and it was from that energy of knowing that they were able to push beyond that which would normally be done you are the same when we talk through these forms we are simply talking to you beyond form for you are not the form in which you live it is simply the vehicle in which you wander about in this place Nothing more, nothing less, of no greater significance than any other vehicle you will ever find in life. Now, we say to you as we go, because we do honor that these bodies are still tentative in their recovery, and we do not wish to tax them. But we say to you, remember, remember that you are source. Remember that you are light, that you have within you everything that you will ever need to accomplish all that this needs to be done. And there is no doubt that it will be brought to fruition. And so it is. And so it is.